What's growing on, gardeners? It's Saturday, July 29th, and the intense summer heat here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina is demanding a ton of fertilizer for our plants to keep them green and healthy. On today's video, I'm going to share with you all plants we can grow that add nitrogen to our soil, reducing your fertilizer demand. It's almost like growing free fertilizer for your garden. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon store and spread shop links in the video description for everything I use in my garden and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. Nitrogen is probably the most important nutrient that plants need to grow. It is the N in the NPK ratio and it is the key macronutrient that is responsible for the growths of a plant's leaves, stem, and branches. For that reason, it is critical that we amend our soil with fertilizers rich in nitrogen to maximize the growth of our plants. However, fertilizer can be expensive. The air we breathe is composed of 78% nitrogen. If only there was a way that we could take the nitrogen from the air to feed our plants. Ah, but there is, and it's a completely natural process. While the nitrogen in our atmosphere is unusable by most living organisms, most members of the legume family are able to pull nitrogen out of the atmosphere and quite literally establish a nitrogen fertilizer factory within their roots. These legumes develop symbiotic relationships with rhizobia soil bacteria. When these bacteria are found in soil near your legume plants, they enter the plant's roots and multiply, forming nodules along the roots. Chemically speaking, this soil bacteria converts inert N2 gas in the atmosphere into biologically useful NH3, which is ammonia. In layman's terms, they're able to capture nitrogen gas from the atmosphere and convert it into ammonia and make it bioavailable to the plant. In return, the plant provides organic compounds that the bacteria colonies can feed off of within the plant's root nodules, hence the symbiotic relationship that sustains each other. When your legume plants get well established and they're on their way to maturity, pull a few of the plants up and check to see if they've developed nodulation along their roots. If you see those nodules, that is a great sign. When the nodules are young and not yet fixing nitrogen, they are white or gray inside. But as they grow and start to fix nitrogen, the interiors will turn a pink or reddish hue, indicating nitrogen fixation. If you pull a few healthy growing plants, break open the nodules, and if you see red or pink, inside, it means the roots are effectively loaded with biologically available nitrogen fertilizer. Now, once you harvest your crop and no longer need the legume plants, if you allow these roots to decompose naturally within your soil, they will release all of that nitrogen fertilizer back into the soil, and then other plants planted in that same location can benefit from all that fertilizer. How much fertilizer are we talking? Well, it's going to vary based on the crops that you plant and the density of the plantings, but studies Studies have shown it is substantial. I'll drop a link in the video description to a great article authored by New Mexico State University that has some great detailed information on the subject. Now, what do you do if you pull your healthy maturing legume plants and there are no nodules along the roots? Well, that may indicate that the rhizobia bacteria is not present in your soil in high enough quantities. If that is the case, you'd want to inoculate your legume seeds at planting by purchasing a simple legume inoculant powder. For large quantities of seeds, you would mix the powder in non-chlorinated water and you would place the seeds in there until coated, allow them to dry for a few minutes, and then plant them immediately. For smaller quantities, like if you're only buying a few seed packets, you can apply the inoculants to the seeds dry. I'll place a link down in the video description for an inexpensive powdered inoculant for peas, beans, and other legumes with instructions on how to apply. So what legumes are good at fixing nitrogen? Grain legumes like peanuts, cowpeas, soybeans, and fava beans are so good at this that they can fix all of their nitrogen needs and have been measured to fix as much as 250 pounds of nitrogen per acre and require no external nitrogen fertilizing beyond the initial planting. Perennial legumes like alfalfa, sweet clover, true clovers, and vetches have been documented to fix as much as 250 to 500 pounds of nitrogen per acre. 
These plants are commonly used as cover crops in earth bed gardens as part of a crop rotation schedule. After the previous crop has been harvested and the field cleared, farmers will plant one of these nitrogen fixing cover crops in its place. These cover crops grow in high density, choking out weeds and fixing nitrogen to their roots. Then, before they go to seed, the farmers will mow the field and till everything under to decompose, releasing all of those nutrients back into the soil for the next crop to be planted. Now, in smaller earth plots, some farmers will cover the tilled under organic matter with large tarps to further enhance decomposition and ensure heavy rains don't wash away all of those added nutrients. Most of us with small backyard gardens are not planting these types of cover crops. We're planting common beans like string beans, pole beans like lima beans, and varieties of peas. Unfortunately, these common beans are not as effective at fixing nitrogen and fix less than 50 pounds of nitrogen per acre. I have noticed over the years that my peas require little to no fertilizing after planting, but string beans definitely respond to a little supplemental fertilizer periodically. However, no matter what legume you grow, this is what you should do to take advantage of the free fertilizer that builds up in their roots. In this row right here, I have some dragon tongue string beans where the plants are still in pretty good shape. So let's pull one up and see what I can find. Now it's a little hard to see, but you can see some of those nitrogen fixing nodules right there. They look like little tiny bumps in the roots. But that being said, the number of nodules on those roots were not all that impressive. So it may mean that next year I should try inoculating my seeds before I plant them. Or it could also mean that the dragon tongue variety just isn't that effective at fixing nitrogen, which I seem to see is the case because the bean plants are pretty yellow without fertilizing them regularly. But regardless how effective your legumes were at fixing nitrogen, any amount is better than none. What you see right here is my sugar snap peas that I grew back in March and harvested in early May. And the reason why they're still sitting here is because I have been letting the roots decompose in my soil the whole time because those roots contained the nitrogen nodules. So anytime you grow a legume, don't pull up the plants after you harvest them. Let them slowly decompose. Now that the roots have mostly decomposed since they've been sitting here for about two months in the heat of the summer, I will be able to remove all of these leftover uh, stems and things like that. So I can pull them because the soil has mostly digested the roots. And all of those roots have been slowly leaching the nitrogen and all the other nutrients that make up the roots themselves back into the soil for my future planting. I intend on planting cucurbits, which is another round of cucumbers and squash in this bed right here. And what's really cool is this is a volunteer pepper that grew on its own from leftover seed from last year. I did not plant this pepper. I have given it no attention at all. It has received no fertilizer. I have never watered it. And look at it. Look at this lush green pepper plant that is starting to break out in flower. I have no idea what it's going to be. It very well may be a hybrid from natural cross-pollination. But what is amazing is this pepper that probably came from a leftover decaying fruit or maybe bird droppings is growing simply in the soil with either the left over fertilizer from back in March that I planted all of my peas with and the decomposing root nodules that are releasing the nitrogen back into that soil. So that is a 100% nature grown pepper that I've put not a single second of effort into and within the next 30 days or so I will more than likely be harvesting something from this beautiful plant. So in summary here's the three-step process to get the most out of your garden and harvest as much free fertilizer as you can. Grow a bed full of legumes whether it's string beans or soybeans or peas or peanuts, whatever your choice is. After harvest, let all of the roots decompose in the soil for at least two to three months. And if you need to speed up the process, place a tarp over them to help enhance the breakdown. Then once all of the roots have digested and all of those nutrients have been given back into the soil, plant your new crop. You can plant something that is a completely different variety. Don't plant another legume in there. Plant something like tomatoes or peppers or cucumbers or lettuce or kale or root vegetables, whatever else will benefit from soil rich in nitrogen but isn't a legume. 
But please, one word of warning, this method will lessen the amount of fertilizer that you need to add to your garden. It will not eliminate it. This will basically get your transplants or your seeds off to a really great start because they will be growing in healthy soil, rich in nitrogen. However, you will eventually run out of that nitrogen and supplemental fertilizing will be necessary. Also keep in mind that plants don't just need nitrogen to grow. They need phosphorus, they need potassium, and a whole host of other micronutrients that they need for their life support. So you can't not fertilize. This is just something that you can do in a smart way to reduce your costs. You still will need to fertilize intermittently and responsibly. And that right there is how you can use nitrogen fixing legumes and the principle of crop rotation to effectively lend free fertilizer to your soil for the next crop that you want to grow. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and please ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I use in real life in my garden and the product that I featured in this video that will help inoculate your legumes, I will place a direct link to the inoculant product. And also I have my Amazon storefront linked down in my video description that has everything that I use in real life in my garden. And while you're there, check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. Oh no, what is this? I don't know if I like this, Brit. <laughs> Are we going to have ourselves a wet gale? Get it. Oh, you did that on porpoise. He's not going to go in there. No. Go, Dale. Go, go Dale. Dale. Okay, Dale. If you want your choice, you got to come. Come here, buds. Come here. Oh, he's not going to go in. Go. He's not going to go in. <laughs> Oh, come on, come buddy. On, come, on, come, come on, Dale. Come on, Dale. Go in the water. Come on. All right. Come on. All right, Dale. You're going in the water. We're going in. We're going in. How's that? How's that? Don't hate mommy. I don't like it. Better. It's horrible. Let's go have a drink. It's horrible. Get me out of here. <laughs> Brittany, Dale is never going to be the water dog you want oh, him to be. Do you need a thirsty? That is one no. sad looking hound. Oh, Dale.